You're good awesome. Enough. Thank you. All right. So it is September 26th and the time is 633. I'm going to call this meeting of GOL to order. I'm going to begin by making sure folks can hear and be heard. So let's start with Lynn Griesmer. Present. Excellent. Thank you. Pat DeAngelis. Present. I love to see it. And Athena, we have heard from you, but thank you for joining us as well. Um, all right. So this is a off cycle, off schedule meeting for GOL. So I really appreciate everyone coming out um, and it should be a relatively quick meeting. Um, we are, we've got only a couple items on our agenda. Uh, we do not have any members of the public here right now. Um, so I just wanna make sure I didn't miss anything that got added. So the, per oh. and counselor Ete has joined us as well, amazing. All right, I'm gonna wait till he connects to audio. Okay, awesome. Hello, Counselor Ate. Hello. Um, thank you for confirming that we can hear you and thank you for joining us. All right, so I was just saying, we currently do not have any members of the public. Our first item on the agenda is public comment, but with no members of the public, we'll move to the next item. Thanks you, thanks you all, thanks you all uh, for coming. And we're gonna talk through the charge uh, for the Amherst Black Reparations Committee. As a reminder of where we are and why we're here, um, thank you, Athena. We sent in, um, Athena, did you make some comments? Oh, wait, you're muted. Athena might have might have helped us out and caught some things that I did not catch. So, so I sent this out to the committee. You should have. It, oh, you and did. I, put it in right. I didn't pull it up. I'm sorry. So these comments. So there are some from me that just explain why I made a change. And then there are some like there was a suggestion to include non-voting members. That's kind of a big decision. So I put that note. Um, yep. There's a note here. The, the council can only designate the town manager or me and then some other Thank like you. some of the formatting changes I did, but then any of the other substantive things I just made as comments. And that's not the substantive ones aren't from me. They're from other counselors. Yes. So um, thank you, Athena. So, yeah. So basically, we didn't do our due diligence when we first approved this. And, and I'll take that as, as chair. That's totally fine. In looking at what were other committee charges and making sure that we had modeled this one after those. So yeah. I'm hoping that today we can move through this relatively quickly. Um, we do not need to accept all of the substantive changes if we feel that they would be better discussed at the council level, but we can't, I, we can, but this is something that GOL is responsible for. Um, so what I'd like to do, Athena, are you comfortable keeping up the shared screen? Is that okay? Okay, thank you. Um, so why don't we, do I'm just trying to change it so that you're not ginormous on my screen, which my Zoom updated, and now I like feel like I don't know how to use Zoom anymore. There we go, found it. All right. So we're going to move through this item by item, um, and what we'll do is we will revote this, and it, the updated version will go back to the council. Does that sound good to everyone as a course of action? All right. Um, okay, so first thing was type of committee, and Athena, you're saying it's we don't it's a town committee, not a council committee. Is that what your the difference here is? Uh, the word. So there's if you looked at the template, which is also in your packet, it yeah. says like what the options are for each of these different things, and it describes what goes in each section. So the word that's used is a town committee. Great, thank you. Um, any objections to that change? I'm going to assume we're good until unless someone raises an objection, if that sounds okay. All right. Thank you, Athena. I'm just going to accept these as we go so that we know where we're at, if that's okay with everybody. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. Um, okay. So then we've got the other, um, the appointing authority, and this adds the uh, charter reference, which is great. Thank you. Um, oh, sorry, I missed that. Sorry. Yeah. Hi, Sandy. Okay. Um, sorry, she just came barreling in very, very fast and scared me. Town manager in accordance with home rule charter section, same kind of thing. We had discussed the number of non-voting members and had landed on that there would be no non-voting members. This was a conversation GOL had, so this was an intentional no non-voting members. 
Um, and that was agreed, the folks who were rep, yeah, Pat. I just want to check is whether the comment is from Athena um, or is it from a counselor? And should and is should we be thinking about that again? But I, I would like to understand the reason somebody wants a non-voting member on this particular committee. I so, think we can, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Anna. I think when we had this discussion, I can't remember, Pat, if you were here for the this part or not. We were talking with um, Michelle Miller and Dr. Shabazz about this as well. And it was a mutually agreed upon thing to, to not have the non-voting members between our committee and those folks. I'm guessing that a counselor asked this question because initially the original proposal from the AHRA report some, yeah. suggested having one, but in consultation with them, we came to the conclusion that we did not want one. Thank you. No problem. The note came from one of the drafts I received. It must have been from either you or Lynn that, that had a note about including non-voting members. I don't know whose draft it was, but it's not my comment. Okay. Thank you. So if that's if that's settled, I can just delete this. Yep. Thanks. Yeah, I think the one we sent to council said none for, for non-voting. Um and yes, that is absolutely we cannot we cannot specify DEI department. So I think changing it to town manager designee makes sense. Um and hoping that he designates someone from a department that would be most helpful. Although I have heard Guilford's looking for more committees to, to um, be staff liaison for, so. All right. Um, da -da 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 -da. I'm just looking, I'm trying to have all the drafts open at once, sorry. Um, then the next, yeah, there was like a throwing in a shell. All right. That makes sense putting in the, the, oh, the acronym, that's fine. Yeah. No problem. Um, There was a question. Who's MOU? MOU too. I don't know who that is. Um, oh, it's you. MOU is you. Huh. I don't know what you're talking about. On the draft I have, your comments show up labeled as MOU too, and I don't know why. Um, in the the PDF that was in the packet. So. I don't know that these had a specific order when we were going through them. Um, I think that is a valid question of whether they are in order of importance or whether we should do them alphabetical. Do folks have a thought on this? Athena, was your suggestion to indicate that to, to... Again, this was somebody else's note. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, then I whoever think it was, MOU is. So, so you, you and Lynn both sent drafts that were edited past the GOL recommended version yeah. and either yours or Lynn's included a comment about moving one of the things higher on the list to indicate priority. Okay. Uh, that was not for me, Lynn. Do you want us, do you have thoughts on that one? That comment? I'm sorry, Athena, I misunderstood you. Actually, that was Pat oh, who Pat. wanted to move that higher. Pat, we'll play roulette of, roulette of comments. If no one knows whose comment it was, it's okay. Let's just discuss it anyway. I, I don't remember to... making that as a um, a suggestion, but uh, looking at it, because I thought somebody else did it, it might be consulting regularly with the Black community and then and to use that to advise and make recommendations to the council it makes some logical sense. But I don't care about the order. I really don't remember saying anything about that. I'm sorry. You're totally fine. Who knows? Um, well, it's it's an imaginary person. We can say it was George. Um, so because he's not here. But I think the I can understand moving it up on the list in order to have it be supporting the um, the recommendations. And I, if I'm recalling correctly, and I'd have to go back and look at the recordings. One of the conversations we had was that the regular um, regular consultation was something that should happen more than just once and we didn't want to put it up at the top so that it looked like it was just a one-time thing prior to making the recommendations that consult regularly was sort of a on an ongoing basis kind of thing mm -hmm. that makes sense to leave it alone then okay um so then one of the big things that i put in and and what i had submitted 
initially was I was going to propose it at the council level as amendments, but because we ran over time, we're doing it here. Um, so I one area we were missing in the initial report was a section on reports and when we would like this group to talk back to us and, and tell us what they're doing. So this is purely mm -hmm. what I put in. Um, and I think maybe Lynn had something, Lynn put the same thing in possibly as well and it's combined. I am not wedded to this, but let's talk through this and see when and how we want them to, and, and on what we would like them to re provide reports to the council on. This is just a starting block. We can change it. Uh, oops. Lynn? Um, I'm not clear why we would have them report to the town council if they're not our committee. And the reason I say that is, for example, the Human Rights Commission is now scheduled to be reporting to us. Well, there's nothing in their charge, to my knowledge, that says they should report to the town council. Usually what the town manager does is he, in his monthly updates, he tells us what's going on. So is this, I, I the more we put in reports to the town council, the more people, more committees believe that they should actually come to the council meeting and make have a half an hour presentation and conversation. So I think that, um, I I can't find, and Athena, I meant to ask you for this. I was Googling furiously and had trouble finding the specifically the HRC charge. That's an aside. Um, but I do know that I'm I'm curious, Lynn, if because there's there's funds associated with this particular committee, mm -hmm. the reporting part seems like it might be wise, but I'm wondering if we could specify a written report um and start doing that with committees generally instead of mm -hmm. requiring an in-person which can be time consuming for everyone involved and not always the most helpful so mm -hmm. um but i'm curious athena if you have any guidance for us on how much we can specify when it comes to reporting and whether it's required or i know like ecac has a reporting requirement i know uh, i thought there were a couple others but i can't remember yeah so lynn um the requirement for the Human Rights Commission to provide an annual report is in the bylaws. It's in the town bylaws. So the bylaw Human Rights and Human Rights Commission, which is 3.3. That's why I can't find it. Uh, the commission in conjunction with the director, director shall annually prepare and submit to the town manager and town council a report on the state of human rights in Amherst with recommendations it deems appropriate, et cetera, et cetera. So, and then the council also requires um, an annual report by ECAC that was, mm -hmm. you know, a council created committee that's a council created it, but it's a town committee. Um, and um, it's not required to ask the ABRC for annual reports. Um, there's already advise and make recommendations to the council on expenditure of funds and so on. So that can happen similarly to how the CPA functions. Um, the the committee, the ABRC can um, make a, allocate uh, appropriation recommendations to the council like at various points throughout the year and the council can act on them just like they do CPA. Um, so the report section is part of the template. So it, it either says something or not, but it's up to you if you'd like an annual report one way or another. I do think that it's helpful to get an annual, sorry, I'm gonna, Lynn, is your hand still up? Go ahead. You're you're first. Yeah, they're actually in the charter. There's five groups that have to give us that have to do annual reports. The town does the state of the town, the library, the schools, um, the uh, board of license commissioners, and the Oliver Will Trust. That's in the charter. There's no other. And and when we were having a conversation the other day, um, at agenda setting, we actually discussed whether or not we should just have the human resources just be folded into that so that anybody who's giving us annual reports are giving us annual reports at the same time. Not necessarily that we would put it in the charter because some of these committees are not standing committees of the charter, but 
Um, that was a, just a discussion that we had the other day. Um, I think I would like to advocate for, given that this is such a new initiative, given that this is a different type of committee than exists, the closest thing that it, it seems like the closest relative to it is um, CPA. I think that it would be appropriate to specify an annual report. I personally think it would be beneficial to everyone to specify a written annual report. And it can be very simple on these three things. I think that it's because we're requiring them to do outreach uh, or, or that's part of their charge uh, or consultation. And um, what work they're doing may extend beyond allocation of funds. I think it would be helpful for the council to stay abreast of what is occurring, um, given the council's strong role in the creation of this group. But I would like to specify written just to clarify and so that it's in the record when they send it in. Mm -hmm. That's my thought. Pat, what do you think? Thank you. I agree with Anna. Uh, it feels to me like this is a very important committee and um, I would like to have a sense of what's happening with the committee. And if it is like CPA, there is reporting that they have to do to us so that we can, um, when they present us with <clears throat> initiatives that they would like to fund, we vote on that. They're not automatically accepted. And um, so I'm not saying that proposals from this group wouldn't be accepted or anything like that, but the process, I think, should be tied to what the CPA process is. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do you mean, um, do you mean tied to the CPA process, or do you mean like echoing the CPA process? Echoing. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Thank you. If we keep a report in here, can I... Uh, can I change this language to say the ABRC shall provide a written report annually to the town council? And then what I'd like to discuss is, are these three items what would be helpful for the town council to know? Or should there be something different, something additional, et cetera? Uh, Lynn, sorry. They have to come to us. Oh, you muted yourself. They have to come to us when they want to ask us to appropriate money. Mm -hmm. So this would be a, like an annual report regardless. Right. And then when they come, I think we need to say something. I'm fine with what's in here. I'm also fine that it be written. Um, at, but I think we need another bu bullet. And that is that that when they come to us for funds, appropriation mm -hmm. of funds, there should be a report just like CPA does. Yeah, that that makes sense. But so that's I, not necessarily the annual report, okay? Uh-huh. Okay, thanks. That's um, I mean. Apologies for turning my camera off. I think my partner just went on the internet, so now I'm, my internet's unstable. Um, okay. Is there anything additional? Um, I'm sorry, I don't have a raise hand button, so you're I'm good, just you're good. talking. Lynn, you suggested adding a bullet, but it sounds like it's the same as this. So do we? Do you want a, another thing that says the same thing? I think we need to somewhere say in making recommendations to the town council on expenditures of funds from the town's reparation fund, uh, recommendations to the town council on the expenditure of funds from the town's reparation fund should be accompanied by a report or something like that. Does that do it? Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just- I feel like, like that's the, obvious. It seems obvious, but I could see them coming in and saying, hey, here's the five projects we want to fund without, you know, giving us kind of what CPA does, which is a nice summary of their deliberation and their does, process. Does, does including the word written 
suffice? Yes. Oh, yes. Because then it, you know, sometimes we actually have CPA make a presentation and sometimes we don't. Based um, on how pressed for time we are. Okay. Yeah, part of me is now going down the rabbit hole of do we need to make be more specific about advise and make written recommendations annually to the like do we do we need to could someone I don't think anyone would, but could someone interpret this as sending the town council an email saying you should spend money on this? And does that count? Or are we assuming that they will develop a full process like we are envisioning and hoping they will? I don't think you need to be more specific about. Okay. I, th I think there's an understanding of what a report is and what it isn't. Okay. Thank you. Um, I meant the recommendations part, not the report part. You Okay. Same. I used the wrong word. No, you're fine. I just, I was like, wait, hang on making sure I said the right thing. Um, okay. So then is there anything additional we'd like to add to the three bullets of what their report should contain? Or are we good to move? Athena, do you see anything that you, that we're not thinking of right now from your experience? Um, I, I was really just looking at this for formatting. So my, when I was reading it, my brain was just doing a format, yeah, a format look. I didn't look at it any other way. I'd have to read it again. <laughs> Pat? I'm, I'm just wondering, I'm just rereading this. Uh, wait, wait, stop. The um, ABRC shall review the recommendations of the AHRA. Uh, <clears throat> establish feasibility priority level of the AHRA recommendations. Is there any possibility that this committee could include or create recommendations that haven't been listed in that report? Yes. Yeah. So we maybe were, it needs to, that needs to be reflected. So we, we did try, we had that conversation um, and say, I must have uh, that, I'm sorry. No, 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 it's okay. Um, one of the, reasons why we just said provide recommendations for action to the town council based on priority level and feasibility that doesn't that does not specify from the report nor does the next um the next two bullets <laughs> accept proposals or the next three really and work with towns and committees to pursue per, pursue excuse me reparative projects and initiative where shared goals so if it's not clear enough let's I, we should talk about it but i think we <laughs> The goal was to have them start with the report um, and, and go from there. Thank you, Anna. I understand um, starting with the report. Sure, um, sure. My concern is I've seen this from other committees where they think, you know, ECAC, everybody, you mm -hmm. do this report, you spend a lot of time on it, and then therefore everything in it is what has to happen. And I'm worried about this being similar uh, in the sense that the... Um, the AHRA worked incredibly hard and diligently on their report. And <clears throat> I can understand why that committee wants everything that they have in it, but this committee needs to be able to review that and also to say, well, these are also initiatives and make judgments about the priorities of the initi initiatives, both from the AHRA and from their own creation. And may I don't know because it's difficult enough to do this work in committee and then not see progress in every area that you want to have that you've discussed in a report. So I'm, I, I don't know. So I'm just worried about the health of, yeah. 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 Um, I hear you. Do you think as we read through these, I, I'm, I'd love to hear if you've got any thoughts on what's suggested language you might add. I think, oh no, I froze. Um, okay, I'm sorry. I think I froze for a second. Am I back now? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, you didn't, we didn't lose your, 
We didn't lose your voice on us. So. Oh, great. You can hear my inner dialogue um, that I <laughs> say out loud. Excellent. Um, I think if you could scroll up a just two lines, uh, Pat, I think I want to, let's reread this and, I, and I'd love to hear from you on any suggested, or anyone, uh, on any suggested language that we might put in to help clarify, because I think I agree. And, and that was the conversation was we, we hoped to have that be clear for all the reasons you said. So um, if it's not, we should think about what language we could put in here to, to help clarify that. And I'm open to suggestions. Lynn, are you on this topic or is it a different one? No, it's this topic. And Amazing. I, I just you... want to, I, I think I've made this clear before. I want to be very careful. We don't have mission creep. Mm hmm we don't have mission creep? Mission creep. In other words, we create a committee and all of a sudden they're going very well beyond what was ever intended. So you're saying, and, and I'm, I'm, you're saying that uh, asking them to create initiatives would be that kind of creep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've always, I've thought that from the day one, um, it, and okay. it's been part of my concern that um, we aren't, you know, this, in my mind, this committee is to come up with recommendations for how to spend the reparations money. That's what the goal. And, and when we got into this earlier, it's now written as if, well, you know, go out and see if there are other things we should do. Well, and it isn't written that way yet, I don't think. I'm just, that's what I'm suggesting. So yeah, I hear you. Um, but so I also, I there's something about pinning everything. What if, what if the town council doesn't agree with uh, the priorities should not be ours. I have no trouble with this committee establishing priorities. But in terms of feasibility, and I just, I don't know. I just feel like it, it may not be feasible to implement everything that the AHRA has in their report. Maybe it is. So, yeah, but, so... And I'm, I'm struck by what's interesting is that neither of you are are pleased. Um, I, I want to note, did we lose Councillor Ate? Um, okay, thank you. Uh, I want to note that neither of you are are pleased with the direction it's going, but both of you think it's too far in the opposite direction. So <laughs> uh, um, so I'm, I just want to address both of these things at once. So for the first three bullets, I think, are getting at what Lynn is saying. P review the recommendations in the AHRA final report. Look at what they are. Establish feasibility and priority level of the AHRA recommendations. This is getting at not trying to accomplish everything on the list at one time. It's not necessarily a checklist. Some things that are in that report may not be feasible um, and they may not be a priority. So this group is going to look at those and determine what is feasible and what's the priority. And then provide recommendations for action to the town council based on priority level and feasibility. This one does not specify recommendations from the report. It could if we really needed it to. So in my mind, those <laughs> first three bullets are saying we start with the report. And I then we get to the main one that Lynn's talking about, which is advise and make recommendations to the town council on the expenditure of funds from the town's reparation fund. This one it would be an ongoing recommendation, right? Um, and this does not say expenditure of funds in accordance to the recommendations from the AHRA report, right? This is just makes those recommendations. I then the, next, Go the ahead. next three, consult regularly with the Black community about the allocation of reparations funds and other proposals under consideration by the community involving reparative justice. Pat, this is where I think it gets at what you are saying, where it is not binding them to only what is written in the report if there is a better idea that meets the times, right? We, mm -hmm. While we know we need to revisit <clears throat> committee charges, we also need to give them a charge that can last beyond a couple of years, right? So in my mind, that's what that fifth bullet does, is that it gives that space to figure out what's next. I, and then, I, oh, sorry. And then the last two kind of work in accordance with that yeah. fifth one. 
I feel comfortable with your analysis. Lynn, what, uh, thank you, Pat. Lynn, I'm, just a, I'm still a little concerned that that it, it I don't know what else to say. I'm concerned about mission creep. What are you, can you specify if if you're concerned about mission creep, what do you believe the mission is that they'd be creeping past? Because I think that might be sudden, where we're... All of a sudden they want the town to do, you know, uh, something that has nothing to do with the fund, was never mentioned in the report. And now they think that because they put it into a writing, it's the gospel. I, I that's best, that's the best I can do. I mean, I. So you so because they would write it in a recommendation to the council, you're worried that the you feel like the council couldn't say no to it. I want the council to always be able to say no to something, and that's right. a hard thing. The committees are having, they're struggling with every day. Is they feel like once they've spent all this time on the report, it has to be implemented and it has to be implemented completely. And I think we've gotten into trouble over that. I think for me, that was, I hear where you're coming from. My, where I am, the reason why I'm not as worried, I think is because of the way that we're framing this as Establish feasibility and priority level. And that's something that feasibility is really key. And so that's part one of this and, and priority level. Um, and maybe, I don't know if that needs to be their first report or something bad. I don't know. But for me, it's the provide recommendations that's, that is written differently than other um, charges that have been more directive. Uh, and and not necessarily written in a way that is about making recommendations. They're written in ways that are saying directly advise or things like that. So this has the word advise in it, but m for me, I feel c more comfortable seeing the word make recommendations. Um, but I hear I I hear you. I think if you have suggested language, that might be more helpful to to try to talk about that. Pat, did I see your hand up for a second? Oh, oh okay. Sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> I don't think that we can, no matter what we write, um, avoid what happens in any committee uh, when they spend an enormous amount of time working on something. Um, you know, I think about. Uh, just any committee. Yeah. Um, and and we still, I think, as a community, still have difficulty addressing issues uh, around race and things like that, which makes everybody uncomfortable, or many, you know, many of us uncomfortable. And we've also kind of weathered attacks from committees. Um, because they thought they everything that they did should be what happens, you know. Right. And I look, I use ECAC as an example. There's been a lot of anger from that committee because we haven't implemented everything that they have in their resiliency plans and stuff. Um, anyway, so and and that's my concern. But I don't think you can avoid that. Uh, that's going to happen no matter what this says. I think you avoid you at least set the ground rules so that if you have to go back to them, they're there. Well, what would the ground rule be that would right? It, so I think we need some suggested language. Yeah. I mean, so which <laughs> Athena, can you scroll up a little? I think we're missing the first couple yeah. bullets. Yeah, I think. Sorry, I know it's broken up on two pages. So when you get to consult regularly with the Black community about the allocation of reparation funds and other 
in proposals right there that that whole rest of that sentence is what opens it up should that be moved up under think, established feasibility and priority level and then and then so Lynn, are you saying you would like to strike that full bullet? Yeah, I mean, if they're going to consult with the community, it should be about expenditure of the reparations fund. I uh, strongly disagree. I think it is about the expenditure of the reparations funds, but I do not think that we should limit this group to only what has writ been written in the report. I think that that is a natural starting, hang on please, that is a natural starting place for this group. But I think that when if we take that out, um, th that it's losing the, the capacity to do one of the initial visions of this group, which is work with the black community to decide what reparative justice looks like in the future. So let me explain. I, th I feel that the report is so broad in its potential recommendations, mm -hmm. it, the door is still wide open, okay? And so nobody has ever said yet in any report to us, we want to spend X amount of money on scholarships or Y amount of money on renaming streets or you know, Z what... amount of money on something else. I still think there's enormous latitude in what they can come forward with. They could even come forward with something that says, here's a recommendation of things we think should be done, but it doesn't cost any money. Hey, let me know when you're done. I'll wait. I'm done. Okay. So I agree that they can do all that. I think that this language, in, in my mind, this language is important because the other proposals under consideration, one, makes it so that they can talk about something in the report that might not require expenditure of funds. But I think that it allows us to give our community the space to say there's something we haven't thought of yet. And I, what I don't want to have happen is have a wonderful idea that would be really great come forward and get shot down because it wasn't in the initial report. I think I, we don't know. <laughs> hang on, please. We're gonna to have to raise our hands, I know. But we don't know what we don't know. And I'm I'm not comfortable limiting this to just what's written in that report that was already written a year ago and wasn't necessarily vetted for, for feasibility. Um, that said, we have three people here. We can, we can vote on this and I'm happy to let democracy win out. Um, but I, I'm glad we're having the conversation. Pat? Oh, Athena, sorry. I don't have to jump in line. Okay. I can go first. No, no. Okay. I'd appreciate it if you go first, Athena. I was just looking to see what the AHRA report said about this successor committee, um, because I thought that might help inform the conversation. And the line that I found was establish a town assembly for African heritage residents to operate as a forum to discuss and propose specific reparative justice initiatives to the AHRA successor mm -hmm. committee on an ongoing basis. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Pat? Well, now I don't know if I have anything. I think that, could you read that one more time, Athena? Sure. Establish a town assembly for African heritage, heritage residents to operate as a forum to discuss and propose specific reparative justice in, initiatives to the AHRA successor committee on an ongoing basis. Wait, does that say proposed to the successor committee? No, that doesn't make sense. This was, if I can jump in, I believe this was the idea. Um, Dr. Shabazz framed it as one of the initial visions was having either like a black caucus or a black town meeting or uh, something along those lines. And through discussion, we sort of came down to this, absolutely a different framing of it, but I think that was one of the initial thoughts was 
the goal was to do that outreach and to create a space for um, the black community to voice to the committee, because the committee is the one who makes the recommendation to the council, but that the community would have a place to voice to the committee where whoever came to this meeting or however they create it wants what they would like to see done or other proposals they'd like to see. I'm having a hard time understanding a committee to advise. It's not this, a committee. They they want like committee. a forum, basically. Okay. okay. Like a public forum. Kind okay. Of. So, yeah. so so maybe that's that's not the appropriate line. The one is the before that is adopt a charge for a successor town committee to carry on the work of the AHRA. Among other responsibilities, this body will vet applications for reparative justice initiatives on an ongoing basis. We changed that one because because we have no idea what it's going to look like in terms of applications and, and things like that. It felt really premature to um, be establishing a, a vetting body, I believe was the logic there. I'm just, I was just sharing what no, no, was no, in no, the I, HRA report. I'm not advocating for one thing or another. I, I didn't think you were, I wanted to explain why that exact verbiage was not in our um, draft. Pat? I'm sitting here so having listened to what, uh, was read about the assembly, et cetera, uh, review the recommendations of the uh, AHRA's final report. And uh, uh, how did I want to say it? Um, I think, one, you want them to review the report. It's important that they review the report. But then it, it really should be to, con to consult regularly with the black community about the allocation of reparations funds and proposals um, and establish a feasibility and prior. I mean, I feel like this, the way this is written, I'm sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. It's why I need to reconsider. Um, right now, the AHRA dominates this. And what I heard Dr. Shabazz say, and, and you have repeated for us now, is that there needs to be ongoing connection to a Black caucus or an African uh, uh, assembly. And that that, though, that body will be making recommendations to the AHR, to this successor committee. And then that's the committee is going to be looking at things from the AHRA report and the new information that's coming from the caucus and then creating a feasibility and priority listing. I, I don't know, maybe I'm making this Pat, more complicated than it needs to be. Well, I think, I think you're, okay. The AHRA did do that, right? Their recommendations were based on a lot of outreach that they conducted. It wasn't just created by that committee. So the consult regularly with the black community in my mind is if they picked out all they wanted to do from the report and talked about the feasibility and made those recommendations, then what's next? And that's the ongoing consultation okay. because they did do a significant amount of consultation in creating those initial recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't see what I'm wondering is, yeah, I think that's, that's, why I wouldn't move it up to be the second bullet because I don't actually see this as an order of operations necessarily. Yeah. Um, if you did want to move it, I would put yeah. it as third or fourth. Um, but I I don't I I do not read this as a an order of operations. I read this as a these conditions should be met by by the committee. Oh, yeah. Um well, but I, yeah. I don't want us to forget that that consultation did occur in the writing of that AHRA report. Right, and if I go over this, I mean, I'm sorry that it has to be so messy, What, but my thinking and stuff, uh, if you're consulting regularly with the black community and then accept proposals from the community through a mm -hmm. process determined by this body. So in a way it's saying, hey, we have the AHRA report, we're gonna be doing this regular outreach and we're gonna accept some of those proposals. Right. So, yeah. Okay, maybe we can leave it the way it is. Um, welcome back, Councilor Arte. Uh, <laughs> um, 
I don't think we've necessarily, Lynn, resolved your, your concern. And I don't know if it's something that you feel this committee will resolve or if we should bring it to the council. Um, Councilor Ate and Athena, you raised your hands at the same time. Councilor Ate, do, would you like to go first and then we'll come back? I just wanted to confirm that I can hear. Yes. I hope I'm being heard. <laughs> Thank you. We can hear you. Thank you so much for confirming. Athena, was that what you were checking to make sure? No. Oh, <laughs> Athena, you're next. Athena's like, I don't know. I assumed you could. All right, go ahead. Athena, what's uh, up? I am wondering if you could talk about this last bullet. Yeah. And, and uh, as Lynn raised the issue of scope creep, mm -hmm. uh, I wonder how the committee is going to interact with other town committees and departments. That feels a little bit like this committee would be in charge of directing departments to do a certain thing i'm i'm mm -hmm. i'm like is this is this make recommendations to the town manager to you know for town departments to do things a certain way or i'm i i think things start to feel like they don't work when there's language in a charge that implies that a committee can direct staff i think it creates a very uncomfortable situation yeah. on for everyone. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that interpretation of that bullet. It was definitely not intended that way when the committee discussed it. So I think we should explore this. When we discussed this bullet initially, the conversation was if someone else is already working on something, can this committee help them? It was kind of actually intended the opposite, right? Of, of this committee being of service to other committees. Um, this started out as, I believe, I believe it was in, I can't remember if it was in the original AHRA report, I have to find that uh, paragraph, but they talked about specifically the Human Rights Commission, I think. Um, and so we wanted to make it broader, but in doing so, I can see where that confusion comes in. Um, I don't think this is necessarily, I, I'm not personally super attached to this bullet, but that was where the conversation went to and from. Um, I think you wanna follow up? If, yeah. yeah, if I may follow, follow up. So I think work with implies that mm -hmm. this committee is doing work that a staff member might already be doing. Mm. And, and that gets into a sticky situation. I think that like, you know, making recommendations to people or, you know, consulting with and things like that is, mm -hmm different than working with because I think you know there can we can get into a little bit of a who's in charge of this and who's directing to who kind of a situation and it's I'm going to strongly encourage you to make that as clear as you possibly can in this charge so that we don't get into those issues later on. Thank you um, that's a really really helpful note um, I'm going to think about what language I'm, I'm wondering if it could be assist but let's hear from Lynn and Pat. Lynn? I think it's more like we want them. Let me let me step back and say what I think they were looking at. They were looking at whether or not, for example, uh, working with CPA, could there be something done around a recreational site that would, you know, advance the understanding of reparations? Okay, they could also. But I'm not sure this is legal. Try to suggest that um, housing be given a certain priority for uh, people that have been uh, harmed over, over generations. I'm not sure if that's legal, but nevertheless, I I think they were talking about whether or not there might be funding that other committees have that their money and their and the other committee's money together might get more done and and yes it would enlighten the other committee but that's the way i heard it was you know they wanted to say we have these much that we have this money you have this money what could we do together that would make this recreation area um have a tribute to reparations i am I mean i'm making it up thank you pat if I'm it's if it's okay, I'm gonna oh, add some I'm yeah, gonna yeah, add yeah. some words based on this conversation, and you can, um, you know, I'm just okay. gonna interpret. 
uh, can I say what I was going to say first? Um, because I I can wait if you would like me. Let's to. just let Athena type it really quick, and then we'll we'll go to you next. Because typing is not permanently in ink. We can always change it. Yeah. If we, if we Um, oh, oh, sorry. I All right. That's a good way. What I was going to suggest, which I, mean, I think a thing in sentence is better. Um, I was just going to say, why don't we just remove and departments from, so is work with other town committees to pursue. But mm -hmm. I, I like, to, first of all, collaborate with, mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if, yeah, you took the town manager thing out there, right? Because and, I was trying to figure out how. I think if we take out town departments, we don't need the town manager there. Do you know what I mean? But where, if, sorry, where are you seeing what? I started typing town departments. Oh, I mean, gotcha. I started I started typing through the town manager because I, I, I'm I'm trying to think yeah. of words to use that will encapsulate you know if if the abrc wants to make recommendations on in improving a, a a town process or an application or something then you know how can they do that that's not directing staff to do mm -hmm. things and so i'm like i was thinking you know through the town manager you or to the town, I guess it's a, it's, it would be a recommendation to the town manager in that case. Um, uh, but I'm not sure how, and, you know, going back to Lynn's scope creep, do you want this group to be making recommendations to the town manager on those kinds of things? Or is that more of a, an HRC? Yeah. I, I think we were trying to avoid that scenario. Um, Lynn? Um. I'm oh, sorry. left over, left over hand. Okay, sorry, Pat. I'm trying to let, lower my hand. I think that just sitting with collaborate with town committees to pursue, to pursue reparative projects and initiatives is enough. Where because, shared goals are present. I think I that don't last even part. I know is if you need that. Okay. But all right, I'll. I I um. So my hand was raised to say I, I actually think the where shared goals are present part is is an important piece of this. Um, I think that both both parties need to agree that it's a reparative project and initiative. Um, okay. And so I, I I think I like this language. I think it's stronger to say, I always love the word collaborate. It's one of my favorite words. Yep. Um, and so I, I'm always happy to see that. But I, I agree taking out departments because I think we really would like to avoid a scenario where uh, we're insinuating that any committee can direct um, staff that's not. I would like to hear from Councillor Ette because you often have a really good way of parsing language that makes us see something we forgot or didn't notice. So if you, if you have anything, no to pressure, say, Councillor Ette, but if you have anything to add, you're welcome to add it. I'm, I'm practicing restraint. Um, we should all learn from you, I think. I So I had my hand up and I lowered it because collaborate is it much better, stronger word. Where shared goals are present, I think has some sense. My predicament is this. Who, what if one of the committees doesn't see shared goals? Then they're not shared goals. Then, in that case, it it's you don't need to have it because if they are shared goals, they will collaborate. If they are not shared goals, they won't. So if I'm not, I I'm not sure about putting that in. If that strengthens the case that you can have town committees working together to on reparative projects. Okay, so my question to that is, if a committee, and I don't have a hypothetical necessarily, but if a committee is working on a project that 
is aligned with their committee's goals and they don't think of it as a reparative project and they're not seeking help necessarily, but another committee says, ooh, what they're doing is reparative and so we should be involved. Should that committee automatically get to be involved? And I would argue no, because that's not the goal of the initial committee, right? They're doing what they're doing for a different reason. So even if it has a benefit of being reparative projects, I don't want to force uh, committees to have to do something collaboratively if they aren't both doing it for the same reasons in the same direction, if that makes sense. Like, I, I don't know. I Maybe my hypothetical is so specific that it'll never happen and this is unnecessary, but I, for me, I just, I kind of, it's almost like having a, two consenting parties. <laughs> Everyone needs to be on board that this is a collaborative project they both want to work on. Um, but again, maybe that would never happen and, and I'm being too sensitive about it. Councilor Ate? I don't think you're being too sensitive. I think what you're getting at is if both committees recognize those shared goals, right? there will be an opportunity to collaborate. Yeah, so I don't think you're being sensitive. Um, so are we comfortable as a committee with the new final bullet reading, collaborate with town committees to pursue reparative projects and initiatives where shared goals are present? Are we comfortable with that? Okay, Athena, can we go ahead and accept that change? Thank you for your help. All right, so we've already discussed the, um, I would like this to say, shall provide a written report annually. Okay, but this is what it says in the CAC. Well, charge. I wish theirs were written too. I think we can improve on the practice. Absolutely. We It, no, it doesn't say ECAC can't do a written report. Councilor Ate? So I am the liaison for ECAC and they will be delivering a written report. Mm -hmm. They always do. <laughs> I think sometimes there has been confusion though, where they've been like, when do we come to council to give our report? Because yes. I think it's not clear. So I think we're, we're evolving maybe, hopefully not evolving. Um, awesome. Does that look good to folks? I couldn't stand written annual report. It has to be an annual written report. That just sounds so weird. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> that makes sense. I agree. All right. Um, okay. So, Athena, I have questions about this next part. I could not find a charge. Admittedly, the charges for our committees are hard to find unless you go through them individually. I couldn't find an example of this. And so could you help me, can you give an example of what this would be? Because I can't think of anything other than the written report. The, um, this, this language, this list, any actions a different body is instructed to take, it's in the template. Yeah, but what does that mean? We know, but what does it mean? You're uh, like, I didn't write the template. <laughs> I, I didn't. Um, I, I think it might be, um, let me see if I can find another one, if, if that makes sense, but I think it might be, you know, um, actions taken by the council subsequent to this committee's report, but let me see if I can find another one. Yeah, Actually. if you can find one, that would be enlightening. I was trying to look back at my my original committee of the dog park task force, but I think that was a task force. So I don't know. Um, that I believe after Athena, while well, Athena is looking that up, other than adding in the charge adopted, revised, and SME status voted, I believe those are the only other changes we needed to make to get this up to snuff. Um, that and take off the fact that I forgot to remove the draft ABRC charge from the top, which should probably not be in there. Uh, it's still draft until the council uh, adopts it. Yeah, but it was last discussed and then it was like a long date. So, okay, that's gone now. 
I, yeah, I put this Thank into you. the. It was an, it was an erroneous oh, header okay. uh, that was left in the one I sent initially. Yeah. Um, I believe we have now followed the style guidelines. Yeah, I just looked at ECAC and they have this long list of things that they're going to be doing. But I don't think, uh, I think that we have that here. And it's, that's still written, list. it's still written within the charge. It's not. Yes, it is. Actions. Yes, it yeah. is. Yeah, it's not a separate section. All right. So I'm going to support not having an actions section in here. Um, and I will maybe eventually support changing the style guide. But um, all right. Any last thoughts on this before we make a motion? Okay. Um, all right, I'm gonna move that GOL approve the following charge recommendation to the council to as rec dated. Recommend the council adopt. Adopt the following charge, sorry. Adopt the charge for the, um, the ABRC I, I should say it out. Sorry, the Africa, the Amherst Black Reparations Committee charge as amended on September 26th. Second. Thank you, Councilor Ate. Uh, calling a vote. Councilor Ate? Aye. Pat DeAngelis? Aye. I am an aye. And Lynn Griesmer? Aye. It is unanimous with one absent. Okay, Athena, um, would you send this to yourself, please? <laughs> and send a copy to Lynn. And would you send me a copy as well? I will send it to everyone. Amazing news. Thank, thank you. Because I was going to have to do that if you didn't. So thank you. <laughs> um, all right, everybody. That is all that we had on our agenda tonight. And I really appreciate you all coming out on um, this lovely, beautiful Thursday. I'm so sorry I pulled you all in from the, the gorgeous day outside. Um. <laughs> A we rainy will... day, which is gorgeous because it is uh, okay. Dry. I like rainy days in the fall because I feel like the leaves pop even more against a gray sky. So that's my this. that is my eternal optimist coming, my eternal hopeful, hopefulist. <laughs> um, thank you all so much. We're back to our normal schedule, which means I think we have a meeting next next week, right? Yeah, first first Thursday. Um, What's on our agenda? What's on our agenda is a really good question. We will have, oh, Councilor Arte is going to tell us. <laughs> you can just say whatever you were going to say while I think about what was going to be on our agenda, because I do actually know. Um, so I, the CRC had an interesting conversation earlier this week about the process. And I think it would make sense to have at some point the agenda outreach or setting documents that the previous councillor Shan um, Shalini had. Yep. Is, is it legislative guidelines? The legislative think? process guide? Yes. Yeah. I, I think um, it would be good to have that just to reawaking the imagination of members of the council in a way that is one of the next priorities that we have to um tackle i sent out the did everyone receive the document that i sent a, a couple weeks ago i think or a week or two ago um the version that was part of the carryover that is something that is coming up quickly for our agenda i believe it's going to be on our next um agenda the only thing that is keeps happening is that it keeps getting usurped by more time bound measures. Um, Councilor Arte, I, I am curious about what CRC talked about and I don't know if I can we can get into discussion about it right now because it wasn't something that we anticipated right. talking about. Um, but I, the legislative process guide, I'm not sure if it would address concerns that CRC might have had, I'm assuming about the nuisance bylaw. And so um, maybe, I can connect with you or Pat, or I can reach out to Pam directly to talk about um, what would benefit both committees. Athena, I didn't say anything, I don't think. Uh, I forget how to 
Oh, Councilor Arte, sorry, I'm sorry. I thought it was a residual. It, it is a broader question, I think, that extends beyond just CRC, um, really, which is how do we get to choose issues to tackle with the council, but also how do we engage the public in the discussions that we have ah, because okay. on a lot of different issues it appears that we haven't been focused in reaching in, in public outreach and I, I think the legislative guideline works with yeah. that and that relates to CRC insofar as it is for this one particular topic yeah. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. That's very helpful. And yes, that is what the guide does address. So um, I will, I'm going to look at our next uh, agenda. What the other things that are coming up are the, um, the, the town manager goals will be a hot topic for us um, very, very soon. And I think what we're trying to figure out right now is whether GOL has to approve the timeline or not. Um, no, we determined no. Great news. So, um, but we will still be starting, GOL sends the draft of, the first draft of the goals to the council for discussion. So that is something that we're gonna have to start tackling very soon, um, as well as the legislative process guide. Uh, and as things move through other committees and come to us, uh, as we know, they're, they're starting to go to other committees and they will get to us after. Um, so I will connect with Athena this week to make sure that your agenda is moving, but um, we have not, forgotten the legislative process guide it's that things keep getting bumped up that have hard deadlines that we get done first um so thank you for that reminder i appreciate it anything else that folks have questions about with future agendas lynn you're muted you're muted lynn we have at least one if not two um proclamations that are going to be coming up one is small business saturday and the other one might be the human rights one I yeah. have one I'm trying to write to, so that might be, okay. All right, sounds good. Uh, Athena, I'll, can we touch base at some point soon? Um, all right, with that, I have no other unanticipated items. Is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? Or any okay. other questions before, okay, sorry. Motion, Lynn, did you make that motion? I move. Thank yes. you, is there a second? Y'all, George is not here to be a brat about this today. Someone second the damn motion. Second the motion. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm not adjourn. supposed to say damn. Thank you for seconding, Pat. <laughs> All right, I'm going to call the vote. Thank I am an Pat I. Counselorette. <laughs> Pat, how do you vote? I don't know. Um, I. Don't start with me, DeAngelis. Counselor Ette? Aye. And Lynn Griesmer? Aye. All right, the meeting is adjourned at 7.41 p.m. Thank you all. Have a lovely evening. Take care. Bye. Get me out of here. <laughs>